Good news, everyone. Patrick Lyonne is back. He is healthy and uh, it is just in time for the first game of the season against the Winnipeg Jets. We're going to talk about all of that and the return of Elvis Mosleykins in today's Locked on Blue Jackets. Locked on Blue Jackets, your daily podcast on the Columbus Blue Jackets, part of the Locked on Podcast Network, your team every day. Hello and welcome to Locked On Blue Jackets. We are part of the Locked On Podcast Network. We are your team every day. I am, as always, your host, Jay Foster, here to bring you news stories, uh, good and bad, uh, updates, game previews, game reviews, prospect talk, all of the above, and more about your favorite team and mine, the Columbus Blue Jackets. Before we get started, I want to thank everyone for making this your first listen of the day every day. Locked on Blue Jackets is free and available on all podcast platforms and also over on YouTube. So uh, if you haven't hit that subscribe button yet, feel free to do so. It helps me out. It helps you out. Everybody wins. I also want to let you know that today's episode is brought to you by BetOnline.net. BetOnline has you covered this season with more props, odds, and lines than ever before. BetOnline is where the game starts. And uh, where we're going to start this podcast is some uh, exciting news. In, uh, Patrick Laine has been activated from IR. He is healthy again. Um probably a little bit healthier than the last time they uh, they activated him. I'm surprised that he didn't immediately go on IR as soon as they came back from Finland, honestly, um, because there was no way that his elbow was 100%. He was supposed to be out for four weeks, and I think he came back after two. Um, but TK, he came back, he played fine, and then uh, he sprained his ankle, so he's been missing for a few games now. Um, and he's uh, he's healthy again, so he's hopefully going to help the team who have, for the most part, been struggling to score goals. Um, I don't know that he's going to help the the defensive lapses necessarily, but getting Patrick Lane back is a good thing. Um, we're going to talk about where he should play in the lineup in just a minute, but I just wanted to kind of highlight some Patrick Lane stats this season uh, because I was looking into kind of the underlying numbers. Um, first of all, he's only played eight games so far this season. Uh, he's got two goals, two assists for four points. Um, he's only projected to have a 34 point season in 69 games, but I feel like once he's back, once he's healthy, he'll start picking that up. I feel like he was uh, like last season, he had a really slow start and then he scored, I think 18 goals in 21 games or something bonkers, um, after coming back from, from injury. So I would expect Patrick Lane to pick it up essentially, um, in, over, over the next month. And I would love it if he could start tomorrow night against the, uh, or tonight, excuse me, against the Winnipeg Jets, his former team. Um, it's another round of the Patrick Laine, Pierre-Luc Dubois revenge ball. Um, hope maybe Jack Rosovic will get in on the scoring as well. We're going to talk about um, Winnipeg in just a minute. But the the reason that I think Patrick Laine is going to start picking up is when you start looking at the underlying stats, first of all, and I've said this a couple of times on the show, um, he's leading the entire team in uh, shot attempt percentage. So when he's on the ice, 60% of the shots that are being taken or the shot attempts that are being taken are for the Blue Jackets. Um, he's got a 207 uh, shot attempt uh, while he's on the ice and uh, 140 attempts against when he's on the ice so you know it's uh it's looking pretty good his expected goals for percentage is sitting at about 60 percent as well um he's got a 61 percent high danger coursey four like it's all of the numbers are looking pretty good and he's shooting at a uh pretty much a career low um he is currently shooting at a seven percent seven point two seven percent which frankly Feels extremely low. Patrick Laine, um, I'm just going to look at what his career shooting percentage is. I assume it's probably somewhere close to 15. Um, yeah, his career shooting percentage is 14.9. His current shooting percentage this season is 7. So it's nearly half. So I would expect that to recorrect um, basically immediately. Um, it's just all of, the, all of the underlying stats look really good for Patrick Laine. Um, and it's really great that he's back. I think um, that's going to help the team massively. They haven't had like a ton of issue scoring while he's been away, um, but I think probably taking the pressure off of that top line might help 
a little bit. I think, you know, it, it's never a bad thing to get, you know, a uh, a goal scorer like Patrick Laine back. You know, he had almost 30 last season. He's got uh, two more 30 goal seasons, another 28 goal season and a 44 goal season under his belt. Um, and he hasn't played a full season since 2018-19, which was when he scored 30 goals. So uh, his first season with the Blue Jackets, he had 10 goals in 45 games. His second season, he had 26 goals in 56 games. So uh, I would expect if he returns, if he plays 69 games, which is what he's currently projected to do, um, that'll be the most that he's played since 2018-19. And I would expect I would expect good things from, uh, from Patrick Laine, frankly. Um, I think at this point, he's earned that. And I think he was... He was looking good before he got injured as well. Like, it's it's tough to say. I don't think he's been fully healthy at all this season. Um, obviously, he got hurt basically, like, I think the five minutes into the second period of the first game of the season. He got hurt, uh, missed the next three weeks, came back, played uh, another seven games for the Blue Jackets, and then got injured again. So if he can stay healthy, I think that's going to really, really pay dividends for this team. The only question is, where does he play? Do they move... Gus Nyquist off that top line when he's been so successful there. Do they start a new line with Patrick Laine and, you know, two other guys? Um, that's what we're going to talk about in the next segment. We're going to talk a little bit about um, Patrick Laine and where he could play in the lineup and where the best place for him to play in the lineup is, according to uh, according to me, basically. Um, but first, I want to tell you about Bet Online because uh, it's your number one source for sports betting information, stats, news, and analysis. You can get odds and trends for every professional and amateur league out there, from football to basketball to soccer, esports. They've got it all at betonline.net. If you love sports podcasts, you can find those at BetOnline as well. They are the fastest and easiest way to get your betting fix. So head to the website today, that is betonline.net, or use your laptop or mobile device to learn more about the trends and action. I just got an email today from Bet Online telling me the uh, updated Stanley Cup odds. And uh, honestly, you could do worse than putting some money on a team like the Boston Bruins to win the whole thing. So uh, that would be my suggestion to you guys. Go put some money on the Boston Bruins winning the Cup. Um, is that a hot take in December? Probably, but I'm going with it anyway. BetOnline.net, where the game starts. So let's talk about where Patrick Laine should play in the lineup because I've been thinking about this basically, you know, since since that top line really started clicking um, because I do like that top line a lot of uh, Goudreau, Jenna, and Nyquist. I think mostly it's um, been Goudreau and Jenna that have really clicked, but I do like Gus Nyquist on that top line. Um, do they split that line up? Do they put Patrick Laine back on the top line? Or do they put, um, I don't know, I think what could be really fun, I think, is Patrick Laine, um and then put Kent Johnson on the other wing. And then probably what they'll do is put Jack Rostovic there. I don't necessarily think that they should do that. I would love to see Cole Sillinger there, for example. But for some reason, Brad Larson doesn't want Cole Sillinger to play more than about five minutes a game. So I expect to see... Jack Rostovic in that second line center spot. But I think watching Kent Johnson set Patrick Laine up for the next 60 games, I think could be pretty fun. Um, it gives you a second legitimate scoring line. It gives you a second line that is legitimately good possession wise. Um, and I think you always have that option to kind of go nuclear and to go for, um, and to go for the Patrick Laine. Johnny Gaudreau, Boone Jenner option. If, you know, you're down a goal, you need that, like I said, that nuclear line. It reminds me very much of, um, for example, like the Pittsburgh Penguins will sometimes have a go nuclear option when they'll put Evgeny Malkin on Sidney Crosby's wing and they will just create havoc together. Um, the, Blue, the Blackhawks used to do it with Jonathan Taves and Patrick Kane, who played on opposite, who played on different lines for, you know, most of the past 15 seasons. Um, but when they were down, they put those two guys together. And I think that could be an option for the Blue Jackets. I'm loath to split up Goudreau, Jenner, and Nyquist when they've been so good and when, you know, the team in general has not been very good. I think maybe you stick with a good thing right now and you have that option of of moving Line A back up and I don't know. What I what I suspect Brad Larson will do is just put Patrick Line on that top line immediately. Um mess with the chemistry that they've already developed and then you know we'll have 
three, maybe four games of Line getting back up to speed, of getting back into that chemistry groove that he started to get with Johnny Gaudreau during the preseason. And then we'll watch all of these tweets like, wow, why do these guys not have any chemistry? Why aren't these guys scoring? Why has Johnny Gaudreau stopped to sit, like having three-point nights? Why is Patrick Line scoring goals? Um, and, you know, there's a there's a really easy answer for that, I think. Um, I don't hate the concept of putting Patrick Line back on that top line. I think it does give us a chance to you know, consolidate all of that talent. I think um, if you put Patrick Laine on that second line, then you are immediately kind of limiting both him and Gaudreau's ice time um, because you want both of them to play, you know, upwards of 18 minutes a night. Um, and if you play the Gaudreau line, 18 minutes a night, and then you play the Laine line, 18 minutes a night, that gives you... 36 minutes that you and then you know that gives you the remaining 24 i believe if i could do math right um to split with the other two lines so around about 12 minutes a night and frankly i think brad larson wants to play the fourth line more than 12 minutes a night so that's going to cut into other people's ice time maybe it's just best to put patrick line on that top line and make sure that they're both getting the ice time that they should be getting um like I said, I don't necessarily hate either option, particularly. I just, I know what I would do, and I know what, or I'm pretty sure what Brad Larson is going to do. So I think it'll be interesting to see how that goes um, in practice. What I am excited about, in terms of Patrick Lyon coming back, is the power play. Um, if only because then it gives the the Blue Jackets, like, legitimate power play options, um, especially amongst the forwards. So at the minute, they're kind of rolling with a... a scrumble together power play unit of uh marcus bjork who has like 10 nhl games on the the back end i think that's probably going to stay where it is but it's kind of been johnny gaudreau and like three random guys that are playing well in that game you know we've seen a gaudreau jenna um nyquist johnson power play unit we've seen a gaudreau rosovic sillinger power play unit like it's just kind of been random and kind of what brad larson's feeling like at the time so if they get Patrick Laine back then that gives you you know in my opinion anyway that gives you Laine on one side Gaudreau on the other Jenner in front of the net doing what Jenner does best Marcus Bjork on uh, the blue line and then you have another guy to play with probably Nyquist um, potentially a guy like Johnson or Sillinger I think Johnson has really kind of flourished in that first power play unit so I'd like to see him but um, we'll see I don't think Patrick Laine is going to magically cure the power play but I think it's going to get a lot better now that they have him there, and presumably as well, I think he wasn't... You could see when he um, came back from the first injury that he wasn't doing the Patrick Lyon kind of clap bombs from the OV spot. I think his elbow wasn't 100%. Hopefully, taking this time out to heal his ankle has also given him the time to fix the uh, elbow, the elbow sprain, I believe it was, um, and so we should be seeing him, you know, really lean into those one-timers and hopefully... Um, damaging some goalies psychologically about it um in a minute we are gonna talk about the winnipeg jets because that is happening tonight uh first matchup of the season for blue jackets and winnipeg jets and the winnipeg jets are kind of not quite back to where they were at their peak but they are i think trending in the right direction so we should talk about that that's what's coming up next on locked on blue jackets so if you told me that uh, the leading goal scorer for the Winnipeg Jets would be um, Mark Shifley, I would not believe you. But he has 12 goals on the season already. He has 18 points. Um, their leading scorer, um, hysterically, is Josh Morrissey, who's a defenseman. Um, he has five, po- five goals and 20 assists for 25 points in the last 21 games. Um, they've got a bunch, they've got four guys that have got over 20 points already. Um, you know, they are, they are, things are starting to click. They've got another guy that's got 18 in, in Shifley. It's, things are looking pretty good for the Winnipeg Jets, which is a problem for the Blue Jackets. Um, in terms of guys that are kind of hot recently, Josh Morrissey has four goals in his last five games. Blake Wheeler has seven assists, uh, and 10 points. Um, and Connor Hellebuck has returned to his usual, uh, Vezina status of uh, a 931 safe percentage and an 11 5 and 1 record with three shutouts on the season so far. That's uh, that's pretty good. And then you flip over to the Blue Jacket side and you're like, well, I guess. Um, 
Johnny Gaudreau has eight points in his last five games. He's really starting to heat up. The best that the Blue Jackets can say about plus minus, which again, plus minus is kind of a stupid stat. I don't really rank it. Um, the best plus minus player on the team right now, apparently is Sean Corrali, who is a dead even, who is a zero plus or minus. So that probably tells you how much about how the Blue Jackets are doing in terms of both scoring and allowing goals. Um, the Winnipeg Jets are better than the Blue Jackets in basically every team stat as well um so we're going to look at power play penalty kill face off percentage goals for per game and goals against per game uh and the jets are in the top half of the league for all of those things except uh face off percentage which is what we'll start with uh they are 26 in the league at 47 percent uh they are almost twice as bad as the blue jackets uh if that that's not really how rankings work but the blue jackets are 13th in the league they're at 50.8 percent um, I do not have face-off stats for season for these guys, but hopefully they can keep that up. Uh, the face-offs have kind of taken a hit recently, but it's uh, it seems like it's kind of turned a corner a little bit. Um, the power play is improving, question uh, mark. They're currently 29th in the league, which is not 32nd, so I'll take it. Uh, I believe there are the, the power plays that are worse, I believe, are um, the Flyers, the Ducks, and I want to say either the Canadians or the Sharks, um, who are, again, basement teams, uh, versus the Winnipeg Jets with 17th in the league with 20.9%. It's only about a 5%, only about 5 percentage points difference. Um, and the Blue Jackets power play has been, you know, semi-hot recently. I think they're, you know, eight... Eight power play goals in the last twelve games or something. Um, it's starting to starting to click. I think again, Patrick Line having that uh, return should help there. What he won't help with is the penalty kill, which has started strong and gotten steadily worse. Um, they're currently sitting at eighteenth in the league, seventy nine percent. Jets are sitting at seventh at eighty two point one percent. Again, that's three percentage points different, which doesn't sound like a lot, but I feel like. The margin for error in these, or the the margin of difference in these like team stats, is so small that you know, like you look at the Sharks have the best penalty kill in the league at ninety one point five percent, which is just bonkers. And then second is the Bruins at eighty three point five percent. And then uh, there are one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. 12 teams that are still above 80%, so uh, 3.5 percentage points difference from the second place team in the league. So they are, you know, maybe five penalty kills away from taking over that top spot, depending on, you know, a bunch of other things. But the 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 margin for error between the penalty kill is just so small at the minute, and it's kind of a similar thing with... The power play, um, the Blue Jackets are at 15.4%, and then the three teams above them have 16.2 and 16.5. That's the Predators and the Penguins at 16.2, the Hurricanes at 16.5. So again, if they have a couple of games where they score, you know, a couple of power play goals, then um, it could suddenly jump them up a few spaces. It seems unlikely, but it could happen. Um, I think the the starkest one for me here is the goals against per game. Uh, the Winnipeg Jets are second, uh, fourth in the league. They allow 2.52 goals per game. The Blue Jackets are 31st in the league, and they're allowing 4.09 goals per game. So, essentially, if these two teams played all 82 games, like, I'm expecting a 4-2 final score, essentially. We're going to do a, a proper prediction in a minute, but the stats say that there should be a... Uh, a four, a four three or a four two, um, final score based on those goals allowed per game. Um, goals four per game again. It should be a three two win for the Winnipeg Jets. They have three point two four goals per game versus the Blue Jackets two point eight six goals goals four per game. So a lot of that is probably goaltending. Um, but some of it is also the fact that the the Jets just have a ton of offense this season. Like I said, um. Blake Wheeler has 20 points. Josh Morrissey has 25. Mark Shifley has 18 points. Uh, Pierre-Luc Dubois has 20 points in 21 games. Kyle Connor has 21 points in 21 games. Like, they've just got a bunch of guys that are, are firing on all cylinders at the minute, and I think that's going to be a real problem for the Blue Jackets. Um, the Jets' current 
record as well. Uh, they are second in the division, second in the conference, I believe. Uh, no, excuse me, third in the conference, uh, behind only Dallas, Vegas, and Seattle. So that will be fourth. Excuse me, I cannot read ever. Um, they've got 29 points. They are 14, 6, and 1 versus the Blue Jackets, who are 7, 12, and 2, which is it's fine. Uh I'm not expecting the Blue Jackets to win this game. This might be the first game that I'm betting against the Blue Jackets on. I don't remember if I bet against them uh, in the last couple of games. But honestly, my money is on a, is on a 4-2 Winnipeg Jets win. Um, although, with them being in Winnipeg, with this being Patrick Laine, uh, his first game back since injury, I do expect uh, him to score, I think, one of those two goals. I think he's probably going to open the scoring. I think it's going to be on the power play. That's my maybe semi-bold prediction for this game. Um, and we also have to talk about the, the goaltending real quick. Uh, Elvis Mosleykins activated off IR. I would expect to see Jonas Corposalo play uh, in Winnipeg, although um, maybe they'll surprise me. Uh, the Blue Jackets have a, really, a pretty spread out schedule uh, at the minute. So they've got Winnipeg, and then they've got a day off, and then Detroit, then a day off, and then they've got a back-to-back Pittsburgh-Buffalo. So I wonder if that's when we'll see Elvis Mosleykins next. Um, but I would, I would expect... Uh, Elvis to rest tonight to back up. I would expect Corpusala to get the start. He also has um, slightly better stats. I mean, it's not... Neither of them are great. Uh, Corpusala has an 8-9-9 and a 3-4-1 and four, a three, four and one record. Uh, Elvis has an 8-6-4 with a 2-5 and five record. So it could go one way or the other. But like I said, I am expecting the Winnipeg Jets to win this game pretty handily. I just hope... I just hope... I do not want a PL to a hat trick. I just, I don't want it. That's what I do not want. Um, which now that I've spoken it into existence is what's going to happen, but I'm crossing all of my fingers. You can't see my toes, but I'm crossing those as well. And, uh, hopefully everyone has fun. Hopefully it's not terrible. Um, we are going to be talking to Harrison Lee about it though. Uh, we're going to do a post game, uh, recording at some point. That'll be Monday's episode. Uh, we'll break down the game, what we liked, what we didn't like. Uh, we'll check in on how Dubois is doing for the team, whether he's probably whether he's going to stay long term or whether he's going to try and angle towards the Canadiens. Again, um, we're going to talk about all of that on Monday's episode. I've been Jay Foster. You can find me on Twitter at underscore Jacob Foster, J A K O B F O R S T E R. You can find this podcast at L O underscore Blue Jackets. If you have comments, questions, criticisms, you can email me at lockedonbluejackets at gmail.com. Uh, thank you once again for making this your first listen of the day every day. Locked on Blue Jackets continues to be free and available on all podcast platforms and also over on YouTube. Uh, hit the subscribe button if you haven't already. It helps me out. It helps you out. Uh, everybody wins. And hopefully the Blue Jackets also win tonight. And uh, until Monday, make sure you stay locked on.